Shadowlands left a bit of a bad taste in people's mouth, right? And many are wondering, can we memory hole it? Can we pretend it doesn't exist? Will Shadowlands drag the rest of WoW down? Will the gravity of Shadowlands' narrative, especially its ending, attract the rest of the game? Pull it in a direction that's a bit too unrelatable? Those are some of the worries going on in the Warcraft community. Because people want to know that the direction of the game is something they'll vibe with before they put their time into it. Well, Shadowlands is going into chromy time. That actually means the new players literally will not see it at all when they first play the game. Liz justified this by saying the story of Shadowlands would be too difficult for new players to digest. Definitely true. But of course, yeah, it had some problems for us vets as well. Now, it takes years to develop an expansion, so Dragonflight isn't exactly some sudden pivot. They likely knew they wanted to ratchet it back before Dragonflight, but perhaps the reaction to Shadowlands will be almost more impacting what comes after Dragonflight. You see, we've been told several times by Blizz they want Dragonflight to feel different. So, what of Shadowlands are we going to carry forward? What is it going to mean? We're going to draw together all the lore elements today, and of course, most importantly, why is it that squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming, today's sponsor, why is that such an alluring link that's worth clicking? Well, a short while back, I talked about how I added the media section to our game studio's website and how it was dead easy, it was super fast. At that time, I had a whole bunch to do. I had loads of videos on my schedule. I was about to go on holiday. <laughs> uh, so I used their templates, bam, 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 done. All I had to do is select what I want, apply the color themes I'd used earlier, and chuck in a bunch of images. Super quick, super easy. And when it comes to adding some of the YouTube videos that we've done, and I do have a few planned there, and some audio, because I know loads of you guys want more of our audio, um, I know that will be just as smooth. Now, they've got other awesome features. Memberships, email lists, e-commerce that I checked out last time, and other fantastic features. I mean, I'm hyped for the e-commerce thing, I kind of can't wait to get started there. It was so super quick and easy. So get yourself started nice and quick with Squarespace's award-winning templates to build out your web presence today at squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming. Of course, code Bellular Gaming, and you'll get 10% off. A big thanks to Squarespace for supporting our channel. Let's go. All right, what are we leaving behind? What's getting cut? What will we not see for a while? Sylvanas. She's in the Maw on her road to redemption or whatever, but basically it's going to be a while before we see her. Questions remain though, things to grapple with. What will happen to the Forsaken? What about the Horde Council? How will they work with the Forsaken? Well, as I covered before, we've got encrypted maps of Tyrus Fall and 9.2.5. We're likely going to deal with that soon. As for Sylvanas, she will be back. But with the way that Blizzard have set up time in the Maw, it's going to be a long, long, long time. And even if it's in three or four expansions time, they could almost run a parallel between Sylvanas and her sister Elyria, where Elyria had the thousand years of war in the Twisting Nether, because of course time works mega funky in the Maw. Sylvanas could spend a thousand years in the Maw, cleaning up after her mistake, before we see her again. That's a thousand years from her perspective. So that's Sylvanas kind of in the box for a while. Kind of like her and Illidan, just a bit gone. Anduin. He's a bit of a mystery, right? He likely does join Sylvanas in the Maw for a bit, per the ending of the book. But what is the plan? Is he going to return later in Dragonflight? I mean, come on, are they really going to miss out an opportunity of Anduin and Rathian working together? They were bros in Pandaria. Anduin punched them in the face. BFA? Well, I'd say if anything, the developing Turalyon storyline or Alliance Tension Fracture stuff is going to happen. Anduin will have to be back in some way for that. But per Ian Hezekostas, the game director, Anduin may even give up the throne or at least step back for a while and let his regent be his regent, which could be a bit rumbly given Turalyon. Okay, another thing we're probably going to leave behind for a bit. Covenants and their leaders. Will we deal with them? I think probably not. Blizzard said they're taking a step back with the cosmic stuff. Dragonfly, then, is about Titans, dragons, and ancient Azeroth history. 
On the one hand, the Shadowlands lore is way too big to put back in the box, right? Because you and me, we, we know that every power has a pantheon that came from his Zareth. Weird cosmic halo ring, who knows? But on the other hand, does that matter? It only really matters if they make it matter in the future. So it shouldn't really impact our boots on the ground high fantasy adventure. If anything, I think they could use ancient Titan lore as a bit of an off ramp to the strange lore departures of Shadowlands. Speaking of which, we've actually not heard a single thing about the first ones in any Dragonflight interviews or official material. None whatsoever. Then, the shimmering blue water in the cinematic. We all thought it was Azerite because the planet's waking up. Blizzard actually confirmed it to be bioluminescence. I mean, Azerite would have, would have been a reasonable connection. We wouldn't have been angry about it or anything. But no, it's bioluminescence. Between that, not mentioning the first ones, man, it does feel like a bit of a step back. I'll get to that a bit more later. We've got to talk about the Jailer, though. Zoval. After the Sepulchre Raid, Furim, who's a great character, I like him, he said the Jailer damaged the grand design of the cosmos. He worried, with heavy foreshadowing, that something could take advantage of that flaw one day. When's that gonna be? That is a looming question. There's gravity in that that will pull the story in its direction in the future. Of course, that lines up perfectly with the Jailer's cryptic line about what is to come. We don't know what that is. We've seen zero pointing towards Dragonflight having anything to do with it. Are we leaving that behind? I'd say no. Is it going to be a dangling mystery for the next, I don't know, six years? Probably. Uh, Dragonflight could sort of explore some of these things, what the Jailer was worried about, but to be honest, I'd imagine it's going to be something a bit more in the future. And here's the deal. Sure, a big new cosmic threat. If Blizzard builds that up slowly, and with intention over a period of time, it could work. I mean, we all kind of assumed there'd be something going on after Sargaris. The biggest problem was that Zoval was shit. It's possible for that to be okay. Overall then, Shadowlands had quite a self-contained story. The thing is, it didn't feel like a self-contained story because Blizzard parasitically attached it to what came before. You know, Zoval, the 4D mastermind and all that. But really, the Arbiter goes down. We all agree the Cosmos is unfair. The Jailer is just a bit of a knobhead. He went around, or went, went about it the wrong way. We install Pelagos as Arbiter. Bang, done. Shadowlands is fixed. Goodbye. We leave it all behind. Of course, now we have to wonder about all the cosmic stuff that can't be put back in the box. But in a way, it expanded the lore, but the actual plot is kind of self-contained, and it would be pretty easy to just not really bother with it again for ages. Okay, what's next, though? What through lines from Shadowlands are going to follow us into Dragonflight? Well... Tyrande. I was confirmed by Ian as, uh, as being an important one. And there's obvious connections. I mean, Elun. In Shadowlands, we hear her voice. That could be the first step in the road to meeting her, or, if Blizzard go a bit more grounded, exploring her creations and the mythos surrounding her. In my opinion, let's just not talk to pseudo-gods for a while, please. Now, patch 9.2.5 also contains an encrypted cutscene called Queen's Gift. There is art labeled Queen's Gift that was data mined and it looks like a seed. So we're kind of thinking that we're going to be getting some sort of seed to replant Teldrassil or a new world tree or some renewal thing. If Toronto is important, then I would imagine the Elune story does get to develop. Some sort of world seed will happen with this Queen's Gift and we'll see the next step in this renewal storyline. That is a way the Shadowland story continues into the future of the game, but also how it could start to mend the rather literal damage to the state of the Night Elves in Azeroth that was inflicted by the bizarre double punch of BFA and Shadowlands. Azeroth, then. How will that storyline be carried forward? Well, Blizzard's story is stepping back from the very heady Cosmos stuff, but we can't just ignore what we've discovered about our own planet. 
Over the last three expansions, they just kept on making Azeroth more and more central to the story. And of course, I'm not literally talking about the crusty planet, I'm talking about the literal god thing at the heart of it. In Legion, we finally confirmed Azeroth had a world soul. Through BFA, we discover her blood is more powerful than anything we'd ever came across before. In Shadowlands, well, we find out that that same blood is sort of pumping up through the walls of Zareth Mortis, kind of opening humongous questions about Azeroth and the First Ones. Then in Dragonflight, it's continued a bit, where we see the land awakening and the Dragonflights taking their positions as guardians of Azeroth once more. Right? So we're probably going to get huge Azeroth's lore in Dragonflight. But that really doesn't mean we need to hear about the first ones again. There is quite a good opening for them to continue the through line of stepping back from the Crazy Cosmos stuff, but still keep the Azeroth storyline going. And they can do that because they're bringing back the dragons. They can take the weird loopy stuff and frame it within the cool core fantasy thing that we already like. Okay, this might seem crazy, but let's talk about what they should keep. Shadowlands did have a few excellent elements. Yeah, I'm going to say that. The Brokers, they're great. I'd love to see them again. I think we will continue to have them. I think they could tie into the very interesting ethereal conspiracy theories that we've posited on the channel over the last few years. But I do think the Dragonflight is just not the place for them. Now, another big win that I think we're going to continue onward is the Nathrazine. Denathrius was a popular character in the community. The developers decided to give him actually more story after he was bound to Remornia. Now, the way that, that all played out with the Jailer's downfall and the Nathrazine seemingly still being maybe even a bit more loyal to Denathrius, it kind of gave us the impression that the Sire always had a bit of an off-ramp from the Jailer. Again, not something we're likely to take into Dragonflight, but Denathrius and his legion of cosmic infiltrators could be important in the future. Actually, no, they are, and that's why I bring it up today. Because 9.2.5, uh, sort of earlyish data mining, kind of uh, suggests there might be a slice of Dreadlord lore in this patch that establishes the new Mythic Plus affix. So they do have a little way to carry that forward. For other characters staying in the story, Taronda, Rathian, Khadgar, those are all confirmed for Dragonflight, but you might wonder, where does that leave the Horde? Because a few Horde characters were in and sort of were sometimes developed during Shadowlands. Well, Bane's Shadowlands adventure didn't pan out. Poor guy. We didn't meet Cairn. We didn't learn about the true heritage of the Tauren. The latter was something we were kind of promised by marketing material. So surely we're due to at least get some of his initially planned arc? Then Thrall. Shadowlands was actually big and important for Thrall because he's now back in his old school, you know, Doomhammer, black armor. And after a quick conversation with Draka, he's kind of over his guilt at killing Garrosh. That is one of the things that was really holding Thrall back. And that actually means that we might have our hammer swinging, element wielding Thrall back in the story, perhaps a little bit more as we know him. Because the armor he's wearing very much looks like Warcraft 3 Thrall, not Green Jesus Thrall. So that's pretty good. Now, the other opportunity for the Horde is Vol'jin. Yeah. Vol'jin, I mean, come on. He's one of the most screwed over characters in the game. He just could have got so much more. He's such a cool dude. Well, the thing is, his soul is now all connected, wrapped up to the Loa of Kings, Razan. And in the, uh, the Night Fae campaign, the Winter Queen uh, sort of stored his soul in a wild seed. And all of this just kind of means that there's room for him to be sort of reborn in Azeroth or visit Azeroth as a Loa. So there's a way that we can still have Vol'jin be back in the story that would continue on the Shadowlands storyline, but kind of like in a good way. Okay, let's look a bit more to the future then for Dragonflight. For Ian Hazakostas, the most exciting challenge of Shadowlands was making something brand new in the Warcraft universe. Uh, that was something he said in the interview with Asmogold. He talked about how the team felt they'd mined a whole uh, bunch out of Warcraft 3, and they wanted to bring the franchise somewhere new. 
So that's where that went. We'll debate for years uh, how good that was. Or maybe we won't, because maybe it's a settled issue. But there's one thing that we know, uh, I think, beyond a doubt. We can never really go back. You can't just say, hey, lore update, Shadowlands didn't happen. I don't think it's possible to retcon it. But, I mean, literally, we know our cosmos is now full of warring pantheons since the beginning of time. And we know the Jailer thinks something really scary is coming to end everything. We can never undo those things. And the thing is that if we weren't so exhausted with that kind of content, then... It's weird. It would be really hard to ignore it. I think because we're so exhausted by it, it's very easy to ignore. But also, as somebody who really enjoys the Warhammer franchise, I do think that stuff can be really cool. It just has to be done well. But I think it's going to be put to the side for a good long time. And I think there's something emblematic of that. When we saw Koranos, the Titan Watcher, in the Dragonfly trailer, I think that was really Blizzard saying, hey, remember when Cosmic was cool? Because he was very much in the style of Ulderman Titan stuff, wasn't he? So much of the architecture we see looks more Wrath of the Lich King-ish, more Ulderman-ish. So as far as I can tell, what I expect going into this next expansion is that really anything that wasn't cool, didn't land, or was just too damn convoluted to be good from Shadowlands, I think it'll just be put in the shelf for this expansion. So how much can we ignore Shadowlands and Dragonflight? I would say almost all of it. Yeah, that's it. Almost all of it. And that's, uh, I mean, from my perspective, pretty good thing. So there you go. If you were just kind of wondering, if you have that existential fear of, oh no, they've jumped the shark. They can't put the, I was going to say put the cat back in the box. I don't think that's that phrase. You know, that it's out of the box. I can't put it back in. And if you were worried that that just means Warcraft's never going to feel like Warcraft, I think it's very possible to essentially memory hole Shadowlands. I think it could work. Okay, that's it. How much of Shadowlands do you want to be carried forward? You know all this stuff with the Zareths? How do you think they resolve that in the future? I mean, from my perspective, you, you could probably just do something that knocks them all out or makes them go all weird or, or something like that or makes them essentially not be that important. Um, I just think they need to make the cosmos not feel like a big machine. Uh, right, yeah, you know, that, that kind of like, oh, weird, what's, what's determined, what's destiny, shaping fate. Let Alex Garland deal with that shit, please. <laughs> okay. Have a great day. Check out today's sponsor, Squarespace, in that link down below. I'll see you next time.